True Islam is not submission to Allah alone. Actually, true Islam, according to the Quran, is completely, wholeheartedly, perfectly submitting to Muhammad and his fancies and wishes and desires. Let me prove that by the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, giving us the power to speak truth even when it comes to Islam, because we want to be men of integrity speaking honestly. Now here, 465. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, in parentheses by Hilal Khan, judge in all disputes between, between them and find in themselves, internally, no resistance against your decisions and submit with full submission. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No resistance against your decisions? You're telling me that a Muslim can have no faith, no real no, Islamic faith, unless he has no resistance whatsoever within himself to Muhammad's decisions, right. and he accepts Muhammad's decisions. Everything right. Muhammad decided, the Muslim accepts those with full submission, has not even the slightest yeah. bit of resistance. Is that is that what Allah is saying there? Yeah, and but that means, by the way, David, you can't feign external submission while harboring resentment in mm. your heart. It's got to be from the deepest conviction of your heart that you will surrender fully to Muhammad. Now, you go read the historical context of this passage. It says that a man went to Muhammad to settle dispute. He didn't like Muhammad's decision. He went to Abu Bakr. Guys, not making it up. Abu Bakr told him, well, did Allah's messenger already decide? He said yes, but he wasn't happy with the decision. And Abu Bakr said, well, he's decided. Why are you coming to me? The man was still, still wasn't wasn't satisfied still. So he went to Umar ibn al-Khattab. And then Umar ibn al-Khattab asked him the same question. Did you go to Allah's messenger? He goes, yes, I went to him and I wasn't happy with his decision. And I even asked Abu Bakr. So um, you know what Umar did? He goes, hold on. This is Ibn Kathir. Now making it up. He went to his house, brought his sword, and cut the man's head off. Ouchie. Cut the man's head off. And instead of Muhammad saying, what have you done, Umar? How could you kill this man, a companion of mine? This verse came down, came down, saying, Amen, Omar, you did absolutely what needed to be done because you cannot harbor any opposition to what Muhammad has decided. So that's 465. Mm -hmm. And then chapter 33, verse 36, folks. It is not for a believer, man or woman, when Allah and his messenger have decreed a matter mm -hmm. that they should have any option in their decision. <laughs> Last time I checked, David, Yep. It is God and God alone who decrees, not God and a creature. Perfect. But here it says, when Allah and his messenger, finally, this one icing on the cake. He who obeys the messenger, meaning Muhammad, has indeed obeyed Allah. But he who turns away, then we have not sent you as a watcher over them. So you don't even need to worry about obeying Allah. If you obey Muhammad, you're obeying Allah. Because Muhammad is a human manifestation of Allah. Mm -hmm. Let me read chapter 3, verses 31 and 32. And the reason why I want to read this is because of the commentary. Say, O Muhammad to mankind. Now that's in parentheses by Hilal Khan. If you really love Allah, then follow me. If you really love Allah, then follow me. And Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And Allah is oft for forgiving most merciful. Now notice, conditional. Do you want Allah to love you and forgive you? Mm -hmm. You must follow Muhammad. In other words, if you don't follow Muhammad, Allah will not love you and he will not forgive your sins. And now notice verse 32. It actually states that. Obey Allah and the messenger. But if they turn away, then Allah does not love the disbelievers. Even though Halali Khan translates it like, still you get the point. Here's what a commentary attributed to Ibn Abbas states. Now, for those of you who don't know who Ibn Abbas is, Ibn Abbas is Muhammad's first cousin. Their fathers were brothers, and according to Islamic tradition, Ibn Abbas is one of the greatest Muslim scholars that ever lived. So here's this commentary attributed to him. Now some will question and say it doesn't come from him. Be that as it may, it's online. You can find it at eltafsir.com. Eltafsir.com. Say, O oh Muhammad, <clears throat> if you love Allah and his religion, follow me. Follow my religion. Allah will love you. And increase your love and forgive you your sins, which were committed when you follow Judaism. Allah is forgiving of whoever repents, merciful towards whoever dies in a state of repentance. This verse was revealed about the Jews 
who claim they were the children of Allah and his beloved ones. When this verse was revealed, Abdullah ibn Ubay said, Muhammad is commanding us to love him as the Christians love Jesus. Yep. And the Jews said, Muhammad wants us to take him as a compassionate Lord <laughs> as the Christians took Jesus as a compassionate Lord. Folks, the Jews and the pagans realize mm -hmm. Muhammad is rivaling Jesus and demanding the same devotion to him that Christians give to Jesus. Now, we, we give Jesus that love and devotion because he's the God-man, God in the flesh. But Muslims are telling us Muhammad is just a man. How dare he demand the devotion and love that only can be given to someone who's truly God, truly divine. Talk about the height of blasphemy. There was a Muslim in your comment section saying, we don't worship Muhammad. Yes, you do, even though you're living in denial. Perfect.